Hello, my name is Austin Leibel, and I am a trainer for Pragmatic Works, and I am on what we call our data engineering team, and I talk a lot about different topics around Microsoft Azure, T-SQL, and Microsoft Fabric. Now, what we are going through for this video is the second in a series on working with PySpark or Python for Spark in Microsoft Fabric Notebooks. So if you have not watched that first video that shows you how to go through and set up your environment, create your lake house, and get your holiday table inside of your lake house, then definitely go back and watch that so you can continue on with the rest of this and then make sure you like and subscribe so that you are able to get the newest content available to you whenever our new videos come out around this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go back and we're going to look at the same notebook we were looking at in the last video, but we're going to actually get rid of this table over here. So we have this holiday table that is inside of our lake house, but by going over here and clicking on the ellipsis for that, I'm going to delete that. Now you're saying, well, why are you doing that, Austin? You already had a table. You already showed us how to go and query it. I did, but I want to show you an easier way than just using the graphical user interface and relying upon Microsoft's kind of lake house performance and uh, using still Spark to be able to move over from that file that we uploaded into the files folder. I want to show you how to do that with a query or with a lake house notebook cell. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to open up one of those new code cells for me underneath my previous one where I was selecting from the holiday table. So I'm going to go through and open this up and I want to say I want to add in a line of code. Now with this line of code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the lake house files folder and access that CSV file that I worked with earlier in the last video. Now for this time, I'm going to drag and drop not the table into my query over here, into my notebook over here. I want to drag and drop the file and just drop that right here in this cell. And what that allows me to do is it creates another data frame. So it's just a different data frame that's going to allow me to go and read in the format of CSV from the files holiday CSV location on my lake house. And it has this optional parameter on it that says header is equal to true. Since this is a CSV comma separated value, the first record inside of this file is going to be just the header information. So that I've enabled that to true, I'm going to get back a result for myself. I want to go and I want to start this cell. I'm going to kick this off. So it's going to go make that connection into my lake house files folder. And then it's going to display that based on the second line of code I have there. That's not commented out display. And then in parentheses data frame. And here's my data, the same data I was looking at earlier, just in a different format and just being displayed a different way. So now that I have this notebook that is showing me the data from that file, I ultimately want to get that inside of my lake house tables folder, but in the Delta format to make sure that I'm getting all the best benefits of the lake house architecture, including the acid properties that Delta allows us to apply. So I'm going to go down here to another code cell and I'm going to create an additional one. And for this one, I want to be able to go in and I want to create something called a variable. Now we talked about variables in the previous video where we talked about the data frame is just a type of variable. For now, I want to create a variable that's just going to contain a string value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my variable the name table name. That's the name of my variable. And then that's going to be on the left hand side. On the right hand side of my table name variable, I'm going to put an equal sign and put another space. And then what I'm going to do is in double quotes, I'm going to put a value that I want my table name to be represented as so that whenever I call upon this table name variable, it's going to know that I'm specifically mentioning that I want the name holiday to be referenced. So with this right here, I run it, it's going to run almost instantaneously because it's not really connecting with data. It's not moving data. It's just storing in memory for this pi spark in this spark cluster that I have running in the background here, it's storing that value for me. Now what I want to do with an additional code cell, I want to go through and I want to put a value so that I can write 
this data frame that was used to connect to my CSV file and I want to write that to my lake house tables folder. Now how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take that data frame. Now remember, whenever we have a data frame that is inside of our, uh, in our, our cluster and we want to go through and access it, we can type out DF. We talked about how to shoot the DF show, but there are many different types of functions we can use with that data frame. If I want to go through and I want to print the schema out, I can go through and I can see, okay, what are the different column names? What are the data types? What is all that information for me? I can go through and I can also use the DF to point to a show. That's what we did earlier. I can roll up, I can sample, I can select, I can tail, I can put it to a koalas, I can do pandas on sparks. There's a lot of different nice options with an intelligence like look and feel. But what I want to do with this is I want to write it. So I'm going to use the write function. I want to say write and then where I want to write it to in the mode I want to write it in is going to be over write. So I say df.write, I'm going to write the data frame in the mode of overwrite, meaning if there's anything there, I'm going to overwrite that. And then I'm going to add in a couple additional options as well. I'm going to say dot format. The format I want to write this in is going to be the delta format. All PySpark and all uh, uh, lake house tables are going to have to be written inside of the Delta format if you want to actually store that as a table inside of your lake house. So I'm going to make sure I have to call that out. And then I'm going to say I want to save. Now where I want to save that to is to my tables folder on my lake house. Even though that's like where we're going to physically store our tables and it's going to have data that's represented there, I actually want to make sure I call out that table name. So I'm going to say in double quotes again, tables forward slash and then after the end of the double quotes, I'm going to add a plus symbol and say I want to use that table name variable holiday. So essentially, whenever I go through and run this code cell, it's going to take the data frame from the CSV file, it's going to write it in the format of Delta and save it to my tables folder and ultimately to the table name called holiday because I'm using this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and kick that off. Let that run in the background. Once that runs, which shouldn't take more than about 20 to 30 seconds, we'll have that table that has been rebuilt, this time not using the user interface and dragging and dropping, which is easy to do, but using code. And if you're connecting with data that is stored anywhere, whether it's in an on-sem premises SQL server that you can connect with, whether it's in an Azure SQL database, an external data lake, or maybe a different cloud provider, you're going to have a similar ability to do this with this line of code right here. As long as you know that, as long as you can connect and create a connection to a data frame, you can go and you can write that there. Now, what I should see here, if I go and right a click or either click on the ellipses and refresh this tables, is that table called holiday has been rebuilt and all is well with the world. Now, what I want to do is I want to then go through and make a connection to this holiday. So just like we did before, I'm going to drag and drop this back over here and we're going to start working and rebuild our data frame. So even though our data frame in the past was used to represent that holiday.csv file, when I run another line of code, because this is a variable, it's going to eliminate anything that was part of that and it's then going to make a connection to the lake house holiday table. So this goes through and rebuilds that connection for me and it does that limit 1000. Now with this, I'm going to be able to see my data, but this is all using PySpark. What if there was a way to go through and take that data that was connected to with PySpark and use SQL operations against that? You can do that using something called the magix command. So let's talk about the magix command a little bit here. I'm going to go and add another line of code and I'm going to use the syntax to take my DF and I want to create or replace something called a temporary view. In order for me to go through and reference a PySpark data frame from maybe something like SQL, which I'm a little bit more familiar with personally, I can go through and do that, but I can't just select star from a data frame. That doesn't work. You're going to have to take that data frame and put it in a temporary view. So when I run this, this almost instantly happens. It's going to be an object now that I can reference with a different code language. Now, there's two ways to go through and reference another language inside of a 
PySpark notebook. You can go through and either start off by go using the double percent sign and then saying SQL, which is the SQL magic command, or you can go through and actually pick and choose on the right hand side of your cell the magic uh, the language you want to use. So by default, every language I every kind of cell I create is going to be in the PySpark language. But if I want to change that, I can do that using this interface here. So I technically don't have to write this. If I have that removed, you'll notice over here on the right hand side of my screen that it goes over to PySpark. But if I actually pick and choose that I want to now go to SQL, it puts that double percent sign over there for me. Now, the last thing I want to do here is I want to go through and I want to be able to select star from that data frame. Now, what we actually have to do with this is we can't just say create a replace temp view. We have to give it a name. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say data frame, create a replace temp view. I'm going to call it holiday. I'm going to call it the same thing that it represents. I'm going to run this one more time. The command was executed before because we didn't put that in parentheses and give it a name. It was kind of storing that in a different way. So if I want to actually reference that object called holiday, that's that temporary view, I would say I want to select star from holiday in this code cell that's being used to go through and access with PySpark excuse me, Spark, Spark SQL, and then it gives me those results. So now I'm saying select star from holiday. Hey, you know what? I want to select just the country or the region column and maybe also the holiday name from holiday. Curate down my select statement for myself. You now can go through and use SQL, even though you're using Spark, you connected with Python for Spark. Now you can just do traditional SQL operations. And if you know SQL, you're like, oh, this isn't any different than I've done before. Now I will tell you, Spark SQL is a little bit different than T-SQL. It's a different dialect, but the general principles are going to remain. Hopefully you've enjoyed this second video in our PySpark series and you are starting to see that eh, this isn't maybe as hard as I thought it might be. That's my really goal of this entire video series is to break down maybe some of the complexity of what people hear when they think Python and say this is, you know, a different language, but it's not too difficult to learn. If you want to learn something, go through, figure out what it is you want to learn and just learn that. You don't have to learn all of Python at one time. Go through, figure out what's most important to you. And then as you start excelling and advancing in your skills, you you'll get more and more used to it. If you're interested in learning more about Fabric or anything else that Pragmatic Works offers, definitely check out my code in the chat down below. That's going to be Austin40 for getting 40% off of our on-demand learning. And also, check out our boot camps that we have. We have a Microsoft Fabric boot camp where we talk about some stuff like this as well that can really advance your skills a lot more quickly. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Hopefully you're excited for the next one. I'll see you there.